stop everything. Is that? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most distracting movie cameos. For this list, we're going over the movie cameos that most distract from the ongoing action in the movie. They're not necessarily bad, but they do break the flow of the movies they're in, at least to some degree. It is worth noting that some of these cameos are plot-related, so consider yourself warned. Spoilers lie ahead. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. David Harbour, Extraction This action thriller may have been released to a somewhat mixed reception, but its pacing and intense action sequences carry it along fairly well. Uh, can't you trust me? No. Good. No! However, midway through, a certain scene breaks up its momentum. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, better off the show. Chris Hemsworth's Tyler Rake, a mercenary protecting the son of an Indian crime lord, decides to lay low at an old friend's place. The friend, Gaspar, is played by David Harbour. The what? best dove hunting in Argentina. Just lie in this pool. You lie in a pool, they fly overhead. And you shoot them. You sip a Cuba Libre. Although you could debate whether it's a true cameo or just an unexpected role, the fact that Harbour's character is seemingly introduced just to quickly change the directive of the narrative is pretty jarring. Don't do this. You saved my life once. Now I'm gonna save yours. Number 9. Donald Trump, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Part of the action in the first Home Alone sequel sees Kevin McAllister staying at the world-famous Plaza Hotel in New York City, somehow once again left behind by his family. And there's plenty more where that came from. Although he makes friends and enemies of several of its employees, it's his encounter with its owner that's most distracting, Donald Trump. Excuse me, where's the lobby? Down the hall and to the left. Thanks. It's a cameo that's only become more distracting since oh, about 2016. While at the time it was a fairly innocuous thing, the sight of the business owner turned WWE guest turned reality show host turned US president becomes distinctly distracting in light of his more contemporary public perception. What kind of idiots do you have working here? The finest in New York. Number 8. Lance Armstrong, Dodgeball, A True Underdog Story The tale of a small-time gym taking on a much bigger rival in a bizarre competition sport Dodgeball is absolutely hilarious, but one of its few serious, inspiring scenes has turned sour over time. Aren't you Peter Lafleur? Lance Armstrong? Yeah, that's me, but I'm a big fan of yours. Average Joe's leader, Peter Lafleur, is prepared to abandon his team before the big game, but he meets famous cyclist Lance Armstrong, who plays his cancer card to guilt Peter back into the game. You know, once I was thinking about quitting when I was diagnosed with brain, lung, and testicular cancer all at the same time. But with the love and support of my friends and family, I got back on the bike and I won the Tour de France five times in a row. However, the message is muddied now, given that we now know that Armstrong was using performance-enhancing drugs during this period. We suppose it's become a bit more comedic, though, in a way, given that Peter is inspired by a cheater, cheater pumpkin eater. I sure do like pumpkins, Cotton. Number 7. Bruce Willis, Ocean's 12. This gang of thieves led by Danny Ocean is known for some outlandish schemes to pull off heists, but one of their most ridiculous also leads to an incredibly distracting cameo. Actually, she sounds like her. No, she needs a southern accent. Can you do a southern accent? She's from the south. What the hell is going on with you guys? In a move that shatters the fourth wall, the crew makes use of Tess's resemblance to actress Julia Roberts, who plays Tess, to get close enough to steal their target. Julia? My name is Teresa. However, they're foiled by a coincidental appearance by actor Bruce Willis, playing himself, who recognizes Roberts and is able to deduce that she isn't the real one. Ocean's 12 went full meta, and anyone who isn't on board with that quickly gets left behind. Number 6. Mr. T and Richard Keel, Inspector Gadget an adaptation of the cartoon of the same name, Inspector Gadget is not the highest of cinema. Uh-oh. From the excessive product placement to the awkward acting, it's just kind of a mess. Relief does not come once the end credits start rolling either. 
Although the credits contain a number of tacked-on scenes, the one that makes our list sees one of Dr. Claw's minions attend a support group for former minions. My name is Sykes. Hi, Sykes. Hi, Sykes. And I'm a minion. But it's been 30 days since I last kissed up to anyone! <laughs> Several recognizable henchmen appear, played by lookalikes, with the exception of Mr. T, whose status as a minion is pretty debatable, and Richard Keel, who famously played Jaws in the James Bond movies. It is a blink and you'll miss it cameo, but it still manages to leave us puzzled. Number 5. Quentin Tarantino, Django Unchained Quentin Tarantino is a director fond of appearing in his own movies. While some of his parts are fairly good, or at least minor enough that they aren't distracting, his role in Django Unchained is a sore spot on an otherwise awesome scene. A white boy. I said a white boy. Shut up, Black. You ain't got nothing to say I want to hear. When things go south for Django, he's captured and being transported as a slave. However, he manages to convince his captors to set him free to pursue a bounty. You got to earn it, white boy. You got something to say, mate, you say it. One of the men is played by Quentin Tarantino, sporting a pretty terrible Australian accent, presumably to blend in with one of the other men, who's actually Australian. Tarantino blows up in the role. Literally. A little don't I'm off you, black <laughs> <laughs> Number four, Jason Statham, Collateral. This thriller follows a cab driver who's forced by a hitman to drive him around LA in pursuit of several targets over a single night. You killed him? No, I shot him. Bullets in the fall killed him. One major plot point is a briefcase carried by the hitman Vincent, which contains the names and information on his targets. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine, mate. Don't worry about it. You all right? He originally gets the briefcase upon arrival in L.A. after bumping into a character played by Jason Statham. Enjoy L.A. The word is that this character is intended to be Frank Martin, the clandestine purveyor of the Transporter series. As great as Collateral is, Statham's cameo has us wondering what his character is up to instead, and if he can take us with him. Number 3. M. Night Shyamalan – Various Another director fond of appearing in his own movies, M. Night Shyamalan is far more distracting in his cameo roles. Can I go? Yeah. Hope you find them. While some of them feature only his voice or are comparatively minor roles, several of the movies featured the director in major parts that would probably have been well served with more experienced actors. A boy in the Midwest of this land will grow up in a home where your book will be on the shelf and spoken of often. He'll grow up with his ideas in his head. The guy literally wrote himself into his own movie as a writer whose work is, quote, destined to save the world. Plus, you can't tell us that another actor wouldn't have been a better fit in his self-assigned role in Signs. I'm truly sorry for what I've done to you and yours. Number 2. Matt Damon, Interstellar Matt Damon has a surprisingly large number of movie cameos to his name, many of which distract from the movies themselves. Um, and I'll talk to you about and help you with a go bag. You know, just uh, cash, credit cards, uh, change of clothes, flashlight charger, that kind of thing, a firearm, if, you, if you're uh, open to that idea. As tempted as we were to choose his part in Unsane, we have to give it to his late role in this sci-fi movie instead. Pray you never learn just how good it can be to see another face. Damon plays Man, an astronaut stranded on a planet who diverts the expedition to his own planet in order to be rescued. Man then betrays his rescuers and tries to leave them behind. His presence in such a crucial role so late in the movie is enough to take many viewers out of the movie. Dr. Man, there's a 50-50 chance you're gonna kill yourself! Those are the best thoughts I've had in years. <laughs> Although, given how mind-bending it is, that can be a good thing. What I think most, if not all, of these have in common is these are cameos by people who are way too famous and or too recognizable to be doing cameos. And they are in no way trying to hide themselves like Tom Cruise did in Tropic Thunder. Anyway, I would say that number one falls squarely into both of those categories, so let's look at some honorable mentions and then we'll see our pick for the most distracting movie cameo. George Lucas in Beverly Hills Cop 3. This forced cameo is with us always. Excuse me. Hey! That's not fair. Maintenance, I gotta go grease the chain. Yeah, how dry it sound? Sorry. Come on, let's go. 
Smash Mouth in Rat Race. A concert is not a substitute for a conclusion. Christopher Lloyd and A Million Ways to Die in the West. Great Scott, a cameo better than the movie. What's that? Nothing. I mean, it's a sweater experiment. Oh. Judy Dench in Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Is that it? Indeed. Oh. Oh. Is that it? Clint Eastwood in Casper. This takes making faces in the mirror to some weird places. I'm gonna kill you, your mama, and all our bridge playing friends. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Madonna, Die Another Day Die Another Day is a polarizing enough Bond movie, given its reliance on CGI and glut of cliches and general crumminess, but this cameo takes many viewers out of what is honestly one of the better scenes in the movie. I see you handle your weapon well. I have been known to keep my tip up. Pursuing Gustav Graves, James Bond confronts the villain in a fencing club and engages him in a sword fight. However, audiences can easily get visual whiplash upon realizing that one of the sword instructors is played by Madonna, doing her, uh, best British accent. Feast your eyes on the finest blade in the club. <laughs> Gustav Graves? Mm-mm. His publicist, Miranda Frost. Granted, the fact that she sings the opening song in the film is worthy of some consideration, but it's still really jarring to see the Queen of Pop give 007 pointers on swordplay. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.